two amplifications. Okay, for the amplification. So we discussed the four conditions. That's the first thing we what we covered in the last class. Apart from this, what we covered is selection of operating point. That's what we covered in the last class. How to select an uh, uh, operating point on the transfer characteristics or actually on the uh, output uh, characteristics of uh, C or C common integer part equation. Given the choice of four different operating points, one is uh, at the origin which we labeled as point A, another one which is uh, close to the uh, VC sat which we labeled as uh, uh, point B, and lastly we have uh, uh, point uh, C which is uh, close to the power dissipation curve. And among the last, the middle operating point is going to be the point B, which is uh, uh, middle in the empty region. That's what we said that uh, uh, point is a suitable operating point because this provides suitable voltage gain as well as uh, current gain. Okay, this is what we analyzed from the output characteristics of C amplifier. Apart from that, we already said that also said that uh, uh, apart from choosing the operating point, the circuit should provide stability against the variation in temperatures. Okay, so whenever the temperature varies. The bias and circuit should provide stabilization. So today's class we will see how to uh, connect us DJT in common energy configuration and uh, use it as amplifier. So topic is uh, common emitter uh, configurations. This is one of the most uh, widely preferred uh, type of uh, configurations. In this common emitter configuration, we are going to study various uh, types of uh, uh, bias circuit. Bias. Uh, Circuits which are in the common emitter uh, configurations. Among them, the first one is going to be uh, the fixed bias circuit. Fixed bias uh, circuit. The second one is going to be uh, the emitter bias circuit. Emitter bias circuit. The third one is going to be the voltage uh, divided by a circuit. The voltage divided uh, by us with the uh, emitter uh, by a circuit. That's the third one. And last one is going to be connected to phase by a circuit. Various uh, types of uh, bias circuits in the common emitter uh, configurations. So, what we are discussing in this uh, four different types of uh, bias circuits, we are going to cover two types of analysis. The one is going to be DC analysis. Apart from that, we are going to study even uh, the AC or uh, called as uh, Load line analysis. And lastly, we are going to study in each one of this configuration merits and uh, demerits of uh, each of this uh, type of configuration or bias circuits. Merits and demerits. Okay. We said in the last class uh, any amplifier circuit you must analyze using superposition theorem. You have to obtain the DC response and as well as AC response. But here we are saying you are slightly in different pattern. The one is the DC analysis, other one is going to be uh, load line analysis, which is nothing but the AC analysis. You will see that uh, what factor does the uh, load lines. Load line is but it's a straight line on the output characteristics of C amplifier. So apart from that, we will discuss uh, among these uh, type of uh, different types of uh, bias circuits, uh, what are the merits and the demerits of this, which one is better. Suited for uh, amplification point of view. So we'll discuss that. So first we'll start with uh, the fixed bias circuit, and later on we can cover other type of bias circuits. In each one of these bias circuits, we're covering uh, those things. Okay. 
even uh, you also from examination point of view, uh, for each uh, of these bars, I put scale to all these those things. Uh, slight theory and uh, more of uh, analysis, mathematical equations and characteristics and so You did not concentrate uh, concentrated fully on uh, uh, theory. So first let us take up uh, uh, the fixed bias circuit, which is uh, the part of uh, common emitter configuration. Fixed bias configuration or fixed bias uh, circuit. Let's draw the circuit diagram uh, for this uh, fixed bias circuit. So this is the circuit diagram for uh, fixed bias uh, circuit. Here we can write it in our notes, uh, this uh, parallel base and emitter. 
uh, since this is a uh, resistor is connected to the base, it is called base resistor, and uh, this is connected to the collector, it is called collector resistor. And uh, straight away, the emitter is a ground medium. We don't have any uh, resistor in this uh, emitter and uh, the ground. And we need to apply the AC input signal. This is a signal which you need to amplify it. If you want to strengthen it, then you are going to apply before the capacitor. Uh, reason is any DC signal uh, present here uh, in the AC that will be blocked by this uh, capacitor. Uh, DC should not go into the base of the transistor. Only the supply voltage DC should go, should go to the uh, base of the transistor. This will establish the bias conditions here. Any AC coming from the any input signal, AC coming from or DC coming from AC input signal uh, will change this bias conditions. That's why uh, we need to block the DC from the AC input signal. So how to block the DC from the AC input signal? Use capacitor. We know the basic property of capacitor. Suppose we have a capacitor, how it works for AC and how it works for DC. Okay. If AC is there, it straight away passes. It lacks like a short circuit. It straight away passes from input to output. But if in case if you apply any DC voltage, okay, this going from input to output is blocked. This is it. Same role which is uh, this particular capacitor which we labeled as C8 or so. But the role is to block the DC presenting AC input signal. Okay? So that uh, this bias conditions uh, should not change. If this bias condition changes, operating part of this changes. Okay? It may go in upper also and lower also, we have seen in the common emitter characteristics. Okay? It may jump to A or it may jump to C also. To avoid that, you want operating point to be in middle of the activation, which is nothing but the D. To make sure that we need to, uh, you should block the DC from the AC input signal. And the voltage between collector and emitter, which we labeled as VDE, base emitter voltage. And the voltage between these two terminals, collector and as well as emitter. Uh, emitter is straight away grounded. Okay? And that voltage across these two terminals is labeled as DC, collector emitter voltage. This is the output voltage. Okay? And the current flowing through this collector terminal is IC, current flowing through base terminal is IB. C0 is the output capacitor. Uh, this capacitor is used again. Okay, any DC going from out from the circuit has been blocked by this. Only AC should go out, but DC should not go out. Okay, it will start dissipating uh, uh, some power across the load, which I am going to connect it here. Uh, to avoid that, what we do is we use a capacitor uh, that will block the uh, DC going out. Okay, so this is going to be the circuit diagram for uh, uh, a fixed bias circuit. We will do first uh, the DC analysis. And later on we can uh, uh, go for uh, load rate analysis, DC analysis. <coughs> we need to modify this uh, virginal circuit uh, of fixed bias configuration for DC analysis. Okay. How do you ma manipulate uh, the circuit for DC analysis? For DC analysis, any AC signal is there that should be made zero or should be ignored whenever we do the DC analysis. Look at this is the original circuit, we have AC signal here, this must be removed. AC output, you remove that. Don't use it in uh, uh, the DC analysis. And even of course, capacitors should not be used in the uh, DC analysis. So ignore the capacitors in the DC analysis. That means only this portion uh, will be used in the uh, DC analysis. So we will rewrite the circuit for DC analysis. So for DC analysis, just use this particular circuit diagram. Which will uh, write this circuit as DC equivalent circuit.
You understood how we modified uh, this uh, circuit, got this circuit from the original circuit? Capacitors removed there, no capacitors. AC signals are ignored. So that's what uh, the rest of the circuit, what you are saying is uh, called as DC <coughs> circuit of uh, uh, fixed bias configuration. Now we have to analyze this. Okay? And based on this, we must establish the bias conditions or operating point. We will see that. Here. How to analyze this circuit now? You have to apply a pitch of uh, voltage gun. Okay? So there are two sections are here. If you look at this circuit, there are two sections are here. One section what we call as base emitter section. Okay? So let us say this is uh, base again emitter current. Okay. I am breaking this complete circuit into two different parts. One part is this particular supply voltage. RB, base emitter voltage, ground. This I will call as base emitter section. Another section is collector emitter section, which contains again supply voltage, collector resistor, collector to emitter voltage, and the ground. Okay. That means we need to apply uh, kitch of voltage the, to each one of the section to make an uh, DC analysis. So, first we will start with uh, using applying kitch of voltage the for the uh, base emitter section. Later on, we can take up uh, collector emitter sections. So, let us apply Kirch of voltage law to base emitter section. Apply, shortly we call Kirch of voltage law as KVL uh, to base emitter section. Okay. What do we get here? If you apply Kirch of voltage law from base emitter section, this is minus VCC. I am starting from negative side of this supply. Even though I showed here positive, it will start power supply will be minus and plus. First we start with minus, then the plus will come. But here they showed only the uh, plus VCC. So minus VCC and coming in this loop, I am applying KVL in this uh, direction. Okay, this is the loop which I consider. So I have started from here minus VCC. When I come here, I am getting the element resistor. Uh, plus IV RB, uh, this plus goes to the uh, plus and minus will be the drop of this. Plus first, next the minus. Uh, this is, you will not write every time, but it is in your mind you should apply this, that's all. So, how do you calculate the drop of this? this? IV times RB and this plus here, so plus positive must be written. So, plus uh, IV times RB, then what else? And don't forget this voltage, it has to be a drop across the base and emitter. And I come across this loop, right? So plus VBD, which is equal to zero. This is nothing but the uh, uh, equation what we obtained by applying the of uh, voltage. What does next we have? After applying KVL, so to rearrange this terms and the simplify, obtain the expression for the base current. Okay. So I have base current here. Expression. I want to obtain expression for this. Let us try to obtain IB expression for IB. You see that IB is equal to if I transfer this VCC on the other side, which will get as VCC minus uh, VBE divided by RB. So this is the expression for the uh, base current type. Also we know that for a common emitter configuration, IC is equal to beta times IB. is a popular uh, current gain equation. How do you calculate current gain in common emitter configuration? Beta is called as a gain factor. Beta is equal to output current by input current. What is beta for common emitter? <coughs> what is output current? I C. Input current is I B. Here I have done the modified version of this. You can see that the brass multiplier that I got it I C is equal to beta times I B. So beta is nothing but gain of the transistor in common emitter configuration, multiply that with IB. I will use this equation, okay? I will substitute whatever the IB obtained here in this particular equation so that I will get the expression for the current. Current which is uh, flowing here. Okay. So let us try to obtain that. So IC is equal to beta IB which is equivalent to IB is already here. So beta times uh, VCC minus uh, VBE whole thing divided by RB. This is the expression for current. You need to remember this equation because in uh, problems, uh, whatever we are going to solve it uh, on fixed bias circuit, uh, 
uh, you need to use this equation. Otherwise, uh, in examination for problems also, you must deliver and remember it. It will be difficult. So, better way is uh, just remember this expression. For a fixed bias circuit, color coherent expression is IC is equal to beta into VCC minus VB over R. This is an actual expression, but uh, you can do some modification for this expression also. Look at this. Uh, normally, the supply voltage is uh, going to be in terms of uh, 10 volts or 15 volts like that. Uh, what is the typical value of a VB for a transistor? For a silicon, it is 0.7 volts. Germanium, it is 0.3 volts. You see that if this is going to be in terms of uh, 10 volts or 15 volts, and this is going to be in terms of uh, 0.7 or 0.3 volts, can we know this? Because this, I want to make this expression as simple as possible. <coughs> Uh, if I neglect this, because uh, why we are going to neglect it, must know it. Since uh, VPE is going to be very very small compared to VCC, so that I can ignore the VPE. So I can write it here. Uh, VPE uh, is uh, neglected. If so that is the case, what will be the expression for uh, uh, IC? Right here, expression for IC, simplified expression. This is called as simplified expression, which is equal to beta will be as it is VCC over R. Okay. It is simply the, if you want to calculate power of the current, it's a gain factor multiplied with the, uh, VCC over R. Nothing but the supply voltage, is nothing but base resistor. Okay. That's going to be the expression for IC. So next we are going to cap right. Any questions are here? What we have just looked at, you can review, go back once again and review it. We started with original fixed bias circuit in C configuration. Later on we return the we are doing first DC analysis, later on we can do the load line analysis. In DC analysis, we return the DC equivalent circuit from the fixed bias configuration circuit by eliminating AC signals and eliminating capacitors also. You got this circuit. This circuit is called DC equivalent circuit. And later on, to, uh, we have here two sections are there. One is base emitter section, other primitive section. Base emitter section comprises RB, VBE, supply voltage. Color primitive section uh, contains VCC, RC, and color primitive voltage. And uh, to analyze this, we operate KVL for base emitter section. Uh, this is what the expression what you obtain for uh, apply, after applying the KVL to the base emitter. And later on, we obtain the expression for IV by rearranging these terms. We got IB is equal to VCC minus VB over RB and uh, look at here, we already know that from the basics of transistor IC is equal to beta times IB because beta is the current gain of a transistor in common emitter configuration. This is also going to be common emitter configuration. So I can use this expression, right? So beta, I will keep it as it is, instead of IB, I will use this particular expression. So I get it the final expression for IC as beta times VCC minus VB divided by RB. Is an actual expression for uh, the base current, uh, color of the current which is flowing in the transistor. Uh, if you want to simplify this expression further, this is an actual expression. Uh, so if you want to simplify this, you can see the numerator of this uh, VCC and VB, you can compare those two uh, values. This is typically IR, VB is very, very small. So, smaller term can be neglected. So, that is nothing but VB can be neglected, and finally, you obtain the expression for the color of the current as beta times VCC over R. This is called as a uh, if you look at actual expression, this is called as uh, you look at operating point means what? In the last class, we have given the definition for operating point. So, operating point is nothing but it is the color parameter voltage, DC color parameter voltage, and as well as DC color current. That point is called as an operating point. So, we obtained operating point for this now. One of the operating point, one of the coordinate of the operating point, <coughs> which is nothing but so DC color to current is nothing but the one of the one coordinate of the operating point is this for the fixed bias circuit. Operating point changes depending upon the type of bias circuits what we discussed. <coughs> Whatever the IC got it for this, you will never get for voltage divided bias or emitter bias circuit. Expression will keep on changing. But for the fixed bias circuit, one of the operating point, one value of the operating point is IC which is equal to beta times VCC over R. Now let us try to obtain the VC also. VC is another uh, coordinate of the operating point. How do you obtain VC? I just want to obtain this. Apply KVL for the color parameter to you can obtain the expression for VC. So let us write it here. Applying each of uh, 
voltage na for uh, collector emitter loop what is it for collector emitter section <coughs> again we start with the plane carrier minus bcc i am starting the uh, moving in this direction minus bcc i am starting from negative of the power supply to the positive that's why it is minus bcc actually this is going to be like this don't get confused it is like this okay my ground is here i start like this the only thing is i showed here positive thus where is the ground comes it comes here okay fine so minus vcc what is super receptor color frame and color frame intersection plus ic times rc plus vce which is equal to zero So try to obtain the, from this uh, expression for VCE. What is VCE from this? Which is VCC minus IC RC. <coughs> the collector uh, emitter voltage depends upon the supply voltage and as well as the collector emitter resistor. Okay, collector resistor here also. So from this. Okay, what we can do is further, and one point I would clarify uh, here. If you look at this expression here, I see collector current expression for this fixed bar circuit. I see does not depends upon the R here in this particular case. You can look at here. Uh, I see in that case, uh, is does not depends upon the R C here, right? Okay, even though I am calculating current here in the collector uh, emitter section. <coughs> After looking into this particular inspection of this particular expression, uh, what we can uh, come to conclusion is, even though I calculate collector current uh, through the collector resistor, but this collector current is independent of uh, uh, the particular RC, the collector resistor RC. Uh, that's an important thing. Always your current should be independent of the resistors. Should not depend upon the value. Uh, what will happen is, suppose in case if I change this, IC will change. In case if they are dependent, if IC changes after it. Understand? So that's why we must make independent of that. Especially in this expression, I see uh, this uh, current is uh, does not depends upon this particular resistor, which is an RC. And similarly, here we got VC as VCC minus IC RC. Let us uh, call this equation as I am uh, calling the, the this as equation number one, which I am using it further, and this is equation number two. So I am writing a block diagram. Look at equation number uh, two. Is it a straight line? Is it an expression for straight line? Uh, I hope that this resembles equation like y is equal to m x plus c. Straight line equation, which is x and which is y here. In this expression, if you compare, but uh, this equation is not written in the form of this. Can you convert this equation into the form of this? Go ahead with that. And tell me which is x variable and which is y variable. Which is x variable? VCC. X variable? VCC. Now VCC. VCC is x variable. VCE. What is y variable? IC. IC. Understand? Look at the common emitter characteristics. What is x-axis in common emitter characteristics? We see what is y-axis. I see. Obviously, this must be a straight line on the common emitter characteristics. Okay. Even the common emitter characteristics also a graph between V C and I C. This particular straight line, okay, is also a line which will relate. V C and I C, is it right? Okay. Why I am linking the the characteristics of this particular straight line? This is a straight line. We know that. This is a straight line. Okay. I am linking this particular straight line equation to that of common emitter output characteristics. Can we superimpose this particular straight line on the common emitter output characteristics? 
wherever the intersection of this particular straight line and the common emitter output characteristics curve, that makes an operating point. So first of all, let us try to obtain how to plot this straight line on the common emitter characteristics. So you understand this one here? So this, this VC equation represents a straight line. How do you write in the form of this? As I said already, our equation is IC. From this delay for IC, that's all. We will get in this format. So, what will be the expression for IC from this? IC is equal to? I want first VC, MX now. What should be the here? If I convert, if I transfer this as IC, if I transfer this to this on the other side, uh, minus VCE, or uh, let us write like this, minus 1 over RC into VCE. Is it right? Plus VCC over R. Now look at this, compare the uh, equation number 7 and this. Uh, okay, now equation number 7 has been changed, equation number 2 has been changed here. And look at this straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c now. What is m part here? It is the slope of the straight line. And x is nothing but the x coordinate. C is the y intercept. The y intercept in this, comparing these two things is it is VCC over RC is the y intercept. The slope is minus 1 over RC. Can we find out two points from this line? How do you plot straight line first of all? We need two coordinates, right? We need x coordinate, we need y coordinate. How do you find out those two coordinates from this? You may first find x variable as 0 and find out the y coordinate. Next time you may y coordinate as 0 and find out the x coordinate. Can we go ahead with that? Because we need to plot this a straight line on the common emitter characteristics. So go ahead with this. Okay. So just find out uh, by making, you can, you can call this as equation number 3, modified equation of 2. Okay. Try to obtain the two coordinates. Now first what you do is draw the common emitter characteristics 
of the transistor. Okay. So we already know how to draw common electric characteristics of a transistor. We just uh, have a graph of uh, between uh, DC and IC, and you show the family of curves. Once you plot common electric characteristics, you can uh, fix these two points and connect these two points that becomes a steady path. Okay. So we will draw here common emitter characteristics of a transistor. So this is a graph between uh, IC which is in uh, mini ampere and uh, VCE which is going to be the volts. Look at this. You need not show any values here, just to plot the graphs as well. Okay. You can see this is a graph between various uh, values of uh, IB. Just show the family of curves in this map. For different uh, values of uh, IP, we have here uh, various uh, curves here. This uh, particular uh, figure shows uh, carbon emitter output characteristics. Next is I am trying to plot these two lines, these two points on this axis. One is the, uh, you can see, let us show first uh, point A, VCC comma 0. VCC may be somewhere here. You know, if you plot here <coughs> as uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, up to 10 hours, if I assume that VCC is going to be 10 hours, let us assume that somewhere here. You understand how I located this point? A point is where Y is 0, that means it should lie on the X axis. So this particular point is A, where uh, this point contains, it is uh, VCC comma 0 is the point. Another point is where X is 0, that means it should be on uh, vertical axis, so that means uh, VCC over RC, okay, maybe somewhere here. I am just approximating this. This point is uh, B, which is equal to X is 0, but uh, why what we have is PCC over uh, R C. <coughs> Join these two lines to get a uh, straight line and this is called as a load line analysis. Just make a perfect plus Okay, any questions? Till here, uh, we will draw this uh, load line. Okay, so this is called as a uh, load line analysis. After analyzing, doing the DC analysis, DC analysis is nothing but you try to obtain the expression for IC, try to obtain the expression for VC. After that, you see the VC expression, it is a straight line if you plot it here. After finding the coordinates for point A and as well as point B. And how do you fix operating point on this? To fix an operating point, so operating point now depends upon the various IB curves. Okay, these curves are nothing but having different values of IB. You must fix the base current first. If you do not fix the base current here, operating point keeps on changing. Let's assume that I am fixing my base current as here IB, S, IB, E, IB, Q. Base current. I am assuming that. I am going to have only this particular base current. Okay. Other than all the curves can be ignored. You do not consider it. So fix an operating point and say. Okay. If I fix this IB, obviously where is the intersection of uh, this particular curve and the AC load line, which is here? This particular point you can say operating. So this particular point is called the Q point. Look at you know the VCE for this. How do you obtain VCE? Just extend this to the vertically downwards. You get uh, V C E Q and just extend this vertically horizontally in this manner to get it uh, the point as I C Q. 
So Q point is nothing but it's a coordinate of uh, VCE Q. I have given just index of Q because uh, instead of labeling simply as VCE, I have labeled here as VCE Q because this point now, this voltage now represents a quizzical voltage. And same way here also, instead of labeling the simply IC, I have labeled as ICQ because this particular the current represents a quizzical collector. So, comma, IC, Q. This is the operating point. So, I can give a title for this. Uh, this is nothing but uh, earlier we have drawn the common limit output characteristics. Now, we have modified this by drawing the uh, load line. What is the slope of this line? Minus 1 over RC. You already know that. Okay. Since from the previous equation, load line equation. So, minus 1 over RC is nothing but the slope of the line. Okay. You look at now. If you change RC, do you think slope will remain constant? Mm -hmm. Slope also changes. Okay. So slope is depends upon the RC. So you understand from this how to obtain the operating point for the fixed bias circuit. Okay. So fixed bias operating point is nothing but its intersection of transistor output characteristics and the AC board. Okay. So provided you fix the base current. Otherwise, what will happen if you don't fix the base current? For different values of base current, you get different operating points. Suppose if I fix uh, IB as say, instead of saying, okay, I will show you this in another uh, part of the curve. But this uh, curve, you can label it as, let us label this figure as, okay, uh, load-based analysis of fixed bias circuit. Load-based analysis of uh, Fixed bias circuit. Can we write the expression for whatever we already obtained? IC expression and VC uh, expression. So summarize this. What is the expression for VC we obtained? I want to just write an expression for VCEQ or VC. VCE, let us make this as VCEQ. See that uh, equation number uh, 2, what we have typed. It is nothing but VCC minus, instead of IC, let us call ICQ times RC. Okay. So this is the expression for VCE or VCQ for fixed bias circuit. Okay. When we give, when we ask some problems to solve, to obtain the operating point, we can use this equation for a fixed bias circuit. How do you obtain the expression for ICQ? You see that already equation number 1, which you obtain. IC, which we label it now, ICQ, which is equivalent to VCC minus VPE divided by RB. It is an exact equation. Okay. You have not uh, simplified this equation. So these two equations you must remember, because these two equations represent the from this equation only we obtain the load line. Finally, we got the operating point. Any questions are here? If not, have questions. We will see that now this operating point is not a fixed here, it uh, depends upon various circuit parameters also. Okay. As we said already, it depends upon temperature. We look at circuit parameters. On what circuit parameters does this operating point depend upon? So, we will show three different graphs now. Uh, one is with respect to the, suppose if the IV changes, operating point changes. Just now I told about that. <coughs> suppose if I choose IV as here, where will be the operating point? It will come here. Suppose if I choose IV as larger, operating point will come here. That means operating point moves up when I increase the base current. Operating point moves down when I decrease the base current. Okay, that means this operating point depends upon base current. You look at base current on internal, what it depends upon? IV. Look at circuit. Don't look at board because I don't have circuit here. Look at circuit. We know that operating point, operating point depends upon these factors. One is IV, another factor is going to be the RC. And finally, the last factor is going to be supply voltage. Okay. 
if you vary one of this, I showed other IB. If you increase or decrease, what is going to happen? Operating point goes up. If you increase IB, operating point goes down. If you increase the IB, okay. What about RC? Look at RC is also here. Assuming that IB is kept constant and now supply voltage is kept constant, I will only change the RC. How the operating point varies? Do you understand my point here? What I am trying to say? Case number one is IB is changed, keeping all other parameters constant. I am keeping supply voltage constant. I am keeping RC as a constant. I will change the IB. How to change IB? Change the base resistor. In circuit, you see that where the exactly the IB flows through the bases. If you change the RB, obviously IB will change. If IB changes, if you decrease the you know uh, uh, RB, smaller drop will take place across the IB. Okay. So IB can be okay decreased or increased depending upon the variation of the base the system. Keeping all other parameters constant. But second factor is. IB is also second fact, second case. IB is constant, and even uh, VCC is constant. I'm not going to vary this. I get uh, VCC, but only thing is RC is varying. Now look at how the operating point varies. If I decrease RC, where the operating point moves. If I increase the RC, where the operating point moves. You can analyze from the characteristics. Suppose if I decrease the RC. I just want whether the operating point moves up or down. If I decrease the RC, operating point is going to move upward because this value will be this value is present in denominator. If you decrease this, obviously current will be more. VCC or RC is nothing but it's a current, nothing else. Again, this operating point will keep on moving down. If you increase this RC, operating point will be moving down. That's the second uh, second case. What about third case? IB is kept constant. RC is kept constant, VCC is varied. <coughs> now the operating point moves when you change the VCC. If you decrease the VCC, what is going to happen? <coughs> operating point moves down, and if you increase the VCC, operating point moves up. Okay. And you know, in case of the first case, whatever I showed, what is the first case? Changing the IB, keeping VCC and RC as a constant. Look at that particular case. Suppose if I fix IB here, on the same load line, my operating point will be here. If I decrease IB from here to here, on the same load line, my operating point will be here. Is this the same case for other two variations? You have to give some work to the brain. Okay. See now, second case. Second case is, I am going to vary the RC, keeping IB and VCC as a constant. You will get single uh, load line. Say for example, I am keeping RC small value. Where will be my load line? Assume that this is going to be load line for smaller RC. If I decrease the RC, this is going to be my load line. If I increase the RC, I will get another load line somewhere in the different. But this is constant. I am not going to vary this. But only thing is, this point will change shift somewhere here for larger value of R sign. Do you understand? Case number one is different from case number two. Okay, case number three also. You will get here in the case number three. Look at I B is constant, R C is constant, V C C changes. V C C is also here. V C C is also here. That means. These two points will change. Assume that I make larger value of VCC. This will be point let us say. If I make smaller value of VCC, that means this line itself shifts. I will get some here point somewhere here, and this point will be somewhere here. You see that my load end becomes this. Can you draw all these three curves? Take two minutes and draw all these three curves. First of variation of base current and show the variation of operating point, keeping all the terms as a constant. Second one is you vary the RC, keeping base current, base CCS constant. Third case, keep
keeping IB and RC as constant, just vary the supply voltage. Go ahead with this. You need to plot three curves. So, discuss 